Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a brief look at another Linux distribution that I have never seen before. Uh, that is one called ArchCraft. This is designed to be a super lightweight Arch system. It's based on either OpenBox or Bspawn or a few of the other desktop environments that are um, more window managers that are super lightweight that are going to be not quite user friendly. These are not your typical desktops that are easy to use like an XFCE or a Cinnamon or a Mate. They are going to be window managers that if you want to change anything, you're going to be digging into configuration files. But the trade-off to them is there's really nothing running in the background to take any extra unnecessary memory. So if you are not a beginning computer user or you're not intimidating by reading some help files and doing a little bit more advanced configuration, this is a build layout that's probably going to be for you. We have two options for the install. One of those is the Calamari installer the other one is going to be a uh, terminal based installer and then you have the option as to which one of these window managers you would like to use the suite of applications is very basic giving you nothing more than the simple stuff that you need to get started out of the box and then uh, you do have some extra things like a list of window commands to uh, teach you how to use the keyboard this is really a keyboard centric distribution and uh, it does have a lot of neat and fun elements to it that uh, you might look at and say, oh, this is actually kind of cool and compelling. Let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do with it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump on over to the desktop after I've installed with this and play with it for a little bit. And I'm going to give you a little bit of the layout of things we usually do. Uh, what's the kernel? What's the RAM usage? What applications are installed? And what are some of the configurations and things that you might need to consider when using it? So let's jump on over to the desktop now and have a brief look. So here we are on the desktop and uh, this is going to feature an open box and the top bar is uh, not the um, known boxes bar but the top bar up here is called poly bar which is configurable in a um, uh, config file not particularly user friendly is what I'm finding. The very bottom is plank is what's running our dock and then um, what we have installed is a basic list of applications. Just, just run through those real quick. Uh, we have a basic file manager, which is Thunar, uh, Kvanta manager, Nitrogen for desktops, Plank, of course, uh, Terminal. We have a couple terminals. We have Vim, um, XArchiver. We have XColor. We have Geary and, uh, excuse me, Genie and Meld for graphics, Vunar, XColor, Simple Screen Recorder. Uh, networking, we have Mail Reader, um, Firefox, and I think Web Browser is probably going to open up Firefox as well. Let's just go ahead and do that. Yep. All right. So um, let's see. Let's go back to our applications list there. Under our office, we just have a document viewer and then some theme selectors and then just some basic um, configuration changes over here. So this is not a platform for a... Um, new user. It's not a platform for somebody that uh, is a novice with computers, but for those that are looking for something that's a lot more lightweight and something that is a little bit different, this one's uh, one that if I can get one of these running on a Raspberry Pi, I might give it a try. Um, so let's just run through. Uh, we looked at the applications. Um, we do have a couple terminals installed, um, but let's go ahead and if I can type today. Uh, so we're running 6.1.1 Arch um, uh, kernel here is what we have over here. And then we actually have a, um, not quite HTOP, but something very similar to it up here. Maybe. Oh, oh okay. It was just a little slow to load, probably because we have the screen recorder running. Uh, so you can see here, uh, of course, the memory is running 430 megabytes of memory. Um, and then you can see what, here's the total, here's the free, here's the used. So you can see it's actually really, really lightweight um, on the uh, build layout. Now we have different desktop environments here, um, different desktops or um, uh, workspaces, I should say, something I don't ever use. Easily jump back and forth between these. Um, what you're going to want to do is learn how to use the, the keyboard um, uh, settings here. So... 
you can load it up uh, in a window here as well. I like this. And then um, what I was able to do is figure out the keyboard settings to move things into the, the various um, uh, corners. So you can easily see which ones they are. So you can see that uh, W and 1 goes to the desktop. So those are actually um, uh, the no number pad buttons there. Uh, but then uh, using the number pads up top with the Windows key is going to give us our different desktop options. And then send to desktop if you want to send this window to it, just the windows, the shift, and then um, you can go ahead and also do the uh, just do the window shift or you can do the number uh, to tell you exactly where the window is going to go. So that's this window here. So just to show you what is going on, if we open up Firefox here, we're on our second workspace. And then here's our first workspace, third and fourth workspace. But if I want to move this around, I can go ahead and do that. And now Firefox is going to be moved over. Very similar to what you have inside of, uh, inside of GNOME. So uh, if you are using this uh, desktop, then you're going to want to... Uh, look at the um, the menu options here and experiment with them a little bit. That's going to be your biggest uh, thing out of the ordinary, as you see. Here's uh, you can run a series of apps as root, and then we have a couple of uh, you know just your basic applications. I like this option: a screenshot now in five seconds and ten seconds in an area or a specific window. And then here's your screen recorder, desktop with audio, desktop no audio. Uh, record area or area with audio and no audio. So a lot of fun customizations over here. Um, and then inside of your preferences, uh, we have a lot of things. Now, the, the downside of this layout is everything is done by actually editing the config file. So you're going to need to read through the documentation and learn how all of this works in order to make the the changes that you might want to make to your system. And then once you do that, it should be fairly easy to do once you have it figured out. But this uh, type of desktop, uh, which is uh, more of a window manager, this is good for, uh, this is good for things that are, are really the advanced user that is very keyboard centric and the person who is interested in, um, just having a, a good, super lightweight system with without a full desktop environment and all the things involved in that. That's why kind of why I'd like to uh, go ahead and uh, maybe play around with this a little bit, see what I get. Let's see, can I open up multiple instances? Yes, I can by with the middle click there. So uh, I can um, I can grab these guys here like this, and then I could do. Let's see. Oh. It's these buttons I was looking for. So let's do that. So you can stack things up and down like that. And then you'll notice that there is this gap between the, the window here. That's actually configurable in one of the in one of the settings. Let's walk through the settings that are actually easy to get um, to get using. Uh, first thing you're gonna find there is a settings manager which is fairly light. We do have basic panel settings based on XFCE. Here's your basic icons and fonts and things like that. All right, um, we don't have a ton of other settings that you'll see fairly uh, fairly absent in the various uh, options that you have. Inside of open box, we have a settings for open box. This again is giving us our theme configurations. So if you want to change your your themes around, us, seeing if there's anything super cool or compelling. Uh, maybe let's go with that one there. That's a little bit better. So you can see that there's a few options and settings inside of there. Let's go back to, if I can remember which one we started with. I think we started with that one there. Then here's your appearances, uh, which is giving us the various fonts. You can see the high customiz uh, customizability inside of this. And then this is actually where the thresholds are on the spacings. Here's your mouse pointers. This labels the number of desktops that you have to work with. Oh, this is your margins here. So if you want to adjust those margins in between the windows and such, you can do that. And then here is your, your dock settings to see where is it at, keep it above all other windows. Now this actually, I don't, I think this is gonna be managed by Plank settings, not by uh, the open config settings. So that might be something that uh, could confuse some people looking at this. 
Uh, here's some compositor stuff. Here is your various uh, display windows. And then you can also change the basic style over here. Um, so here's your beach option. Look at that. Uh, which kind of moves everything everywhere. Very neat. Um, and then let's go ahead and look at, I think this is our, uh, that's adaptive. There you go. So you can actually go through and see the the different options that we that we have. I didn't play around with all those. Let's see what else we have in here. Uh, this should go back to our basic default there. There you go. Let me just read the list here real quick. And there's a forest. There's a hack. What is this? Can be a Facebook logo? I don't know. Here's changing your fonts. Uh, here's your status bar fonts, terminal fonts, desktop fonts. So here is if you want to change your fonts inside of your your panel, you can do that. That might need to reset. I don't know. I can't. I can't tell if it's working well there or not. All right. Uh, changing your wallpaper. This is nitrogen for changing your wallpaper. We do have a few different wallpapers available by default. And let's just go back to our basic default there. And then the other thing, we have QT5 settings, uh, Kvantum Manager, um, which is for, I think this is window themes, I think, or application themes. And then your basic power settings and uh, back to our settings manager. So here is your basic power settings. So you can see it's kind of a, a mixture of a few different things. Um, some of the things I like about the panel up at the top, we do have this is our, um, our way of loading applications. Uh, you can get to it with the window bar as well, or of course, anywhere else. And there's hotkeys for all of them as well. We have our desktop switcher, and then we can monitor how much RAM disk space and processing power. We have our network in and out. Uh, the NA here is, uh, if you're on a laptop, this is going to be your screen brightness. And then you can adjust your uh, your volume here. I don't think you can actually adjust it by clicking the button over here. Um, but I'm sure if we, let's see. Uh, okay, yep, we can just do our basic volume button on the keyboard. To adjust those we do have a button over here I don't know if these are going to be like uh, um, something that will interfere with the copyright option just push this guy here and it's going to cycle through a variety of um, oops, wrong button going to cycle through a variety of music that's over here but I do think that that is its own playlist as well there's actually a help setting inside the the welcome menu to tell you how to change what is on the music up there. And of course we have our date and stuff. You can click on it to toggle between those. So uh, that is kind of what we have. It's just super lightweight, uh, a really nice option. And uh, the installation, you do have a few different installation options. One of those is Calamaris and the other one is more of a uh, terminal based installer. And then it works out pretty well. Uh, again, it's not as user friendly, um, but it will work uh, for the person that's not overall um, a brand new noob or not afraid of reading it through a few different documentation things. I do think it's compelling enough. I might want to play around with it a little bit, see if I can get a, a version of this working on a Raspberry Pi. Um, and then uh, once we get that done, then we'll get a chance to um, uh, see how it works as far as a, a daily driver is concerned. It may, it may not work. I don't know. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, have a look at that in the future. But uh, this is uh, Archcraft, which I've never seen before, uh, seeing it over on DistroWatch the other day. All right, there is our look at Archcraft. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to see if I can't get this running on a Raspberry Pi, or at least maybe something else based on OpenBox. I actually have a few other distros I've downloaded recently that do have Pi versions. We're going to look at those in the future as well. With that, though, guys, thanks for watching this video. Uh, join us over on Patreon, Local, Subscribestar, all at Switch to Linux. We have uh, the support channels in all those places. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. 
you can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.